Hello and welcome to NQ Design. In this video I am going to show you four different ways of customizing the simple search icon I created in my previous video and I will also show you different ways to apply color to them. Please take a look at my previous video which is linked in the description below. Follow all the steps in this video until you come to the part where I expand the strokes into shapes. That's where we will continue in this video. Let's start with the design process. Here is the simple search icon I created in my previous video. Select the artboard tool in the toolbar, press command C to copy the artboard and press command V four times to paste the artboard four times. Now I have created four different icons which I will customize. Let's start with the first one. I will create a shine stroke in the ellipse part of the icon. Click anywhere in the artboard, press command 0 to fit the artboard in the window. Click on the ellipse, press command C and shift command V to paste it in place. Go to the transform panel and set the width and height to 10 pixels. Make sure the reference point is set to center. Open the color panel and color the stroke of the ellipse any color you want. We will use it as a guideline to make sure we place the shine stroke in the right position and we will delete it later. Now press Shift Command V to paste the ellipse in place again. Open the stroke panel and set a line stroke to center. Set the height and the width of this ellipse to 4 pixels. Now we can see that the small ellipse is in the right place because of the guideline we created. Select the scissors tool in the toolbar and click on the upper and the right anchor points of the ellipse. Now we separated the ellipse stroke into two parts. Pick selection tool and make sure the bottom left part of the ellipse is selected. Press the backspace key to delete it. You can also delete the guideline ellipse. Select this stroke, go to the stroke panel and select the round cap. We are done with our first icon. Let's go to our second icon. I will click on the ellipse, set the reference point to the upper left corner and set the width and height to 13 pixels. Now select the Width tool in the toolbar and double click on the bottom right, right anchor point of the handle. We can edit the width of the anchor point we clicked on. Set total width to 4 pixels and click OK. Now we have to move the handle to the right position. Pick the Selection tool in the toolbar, select the handle and set the X and Y coordinates to 13.3. We are done with our second icon. Let's move on to the third one. Click on the ellipse and resize it to 13 by 13 pixels. Select the handle, set, set the reference point to the bottom right corner and resize it to 6 by 6 pixels. Open the stroke panel and set the weight to 2.5 points and select butt cap. Select the Rectangle tool in the toolbar, click anywhere in the document to open the Rectangle tool dialog, set the width and height to 4.5 pixels, and click OK. I will use this rectangle as a guideline to divide the handle stroke into two parts. Pick the Selection tool in the toolbar, select the new rectangle and the handle by holding the Shift key, Click the handle once again to make it the key object, go to the Align panel and align the rectangle to the bottom right side of the handle. Deselect both objects by clicking anywhere in the document. Click on the handle and select the scissors tool in the toolbar. Find the point where the handle and the rectangle intersect and click on it. Now we split the handle stroke into two parts. You can delete the rectangle now. Select the smaller part of the handle, pick the width tool and double click on the upper left anchor point. 
set the total width to one and a half pixels and click OK. Zoom in and try to find the center of the smaller stroke. The Illustrator will display the text intersect when you are in the center. Double click and set the total width to one and a half pixels. Press Command 0 to fit the artboard in window. This is our third icon. Last but not least, now we will create the fourth icon. Resize the ellipse to 12 by 12 pixels with the reference point set to the upper left corner and the handle stroke to 7 by 7 pixels with the reference point set to the bottom right corner. When the handle is selected, press Command C and Shift Command V to copy the handle. Set the reference point to the upper left corner and resize the stroke to 1 by 1 pixels. I will give it a different color temporarily, so I can see it better. Now select the longer stroke, set the reference point to the bottom right corner and resize it to 2x2 two two pixels. Press the up arrow key two times and the left arrow key two times to move it to the right position. Now go to Object, Expand, make sure that the stroke setting is selected and click OK. We transformed the stroke to a fill now. Go to the toolbar and swap fill and stroke. Open the stroke panel, set stroke weight to 2 points and align stroke to outside. Change the stroke color of the small stroke back to the original color. We're done now with all four icons. Let's take a look at some ideas on how to apply color to them. You can use a single color for all the icon elements, but feel free to experiment with different colors. I already prepared some I will use. I will use this blue as a primary color and the other two colors as secondary colors. With the first icon, I decided to make all the elements blue. I will use the eyedropper tool and hold shift when clicking on the swatch to apply this color to all the strokes. Zoom in, select the ellipse, press Command C and Shift Command V to copy and paste it in place. Swap fill and stroke, set opacity to 16%, right click on the ellipse, go to arrange, send to back. This is our first icon, let's move on to the next one. For the next one I will also select all the elements and apply the same blue color to them. Zoom in. Select the handle and open the gradient panel. If you don't see the gradient panel, go to Window and find Gradient. Make sure Stroke is selected and click on the gradient to activate it. I will set the colors by clicking on the color circles in the gradient slider and selecting the color picker. I will click here to pick the blue color. I will select another color a darker blue color. You can now close the gradient panel, press Command 0 to zoom in, press V for the selection tool, right click, go to arrange and send to back. This is our second icon. For the third icon I will select the ellipse and the larger part of the handle and set the color to the primary blue. Now I will select the smaller part of the handle and I will set the color to the darker blue. Zoom in, right click and go to arrange, send to back to make sure the ellipse is in the foreground. I think this color combination gives the icon an interesting effect. For the last icon I will color all the strokes with the primary blue. I will duplicate the handle part and set the color to this lime green. Let's take a look at the last icon. You can now expand the shapes first by clicking the ellipse and the blue handle part, go to object, expand appearance, select the smaller handle part, go to object, expand and click OK. Select all the blue elements, go to pathfinder and unite them in one shape. Select all the elements, press command G to group them together. 
you can export them by clicking on file, export, export for screens like I showed you in my previous video. That was all for now. Join me in the next video where I will show you a simple technique on how to add the plus or minus signs to the search icon to make it a zoom in or zoom out icon. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Let me know in the comments which of the four icons I created you like the most. See you soon in another design video. Stay creative and keep on learning design.